What's up guys and welcome back to a brand new video on this channel. This is the second video and today we're going to be talking about digital art for beginners. Or as I like to call it, digital art 101. Now roll that intro that took two hours to make. Hopefully you guys like it. graphics designer or a digital artist or whatever but that specific job needs you to make art digitally well if you don't know what to do or what to get I've got you covered in this video so digital art is generally an extremely large topic to cover so I've broken it down into three simple sections number one hardware, number two, software, and number three, creating the art itself. First off, we have hardware. To create digital art, you are obviously going to need hardware. The simplest digital art equipment you're going to need is your computer and a drawing pad. Now, if you don't know what a drawing pad looks like, let me show you. This is a drawing pad. It's a really small and compact device that you can connect to your PC or laptop wherever you are whether you're at home or outside and this is gonna help you create those smooth satisfying lines you're gonna need to create awesome art this is what most digital artists start out as when they're just beginning now if you're a professional and you are looking at digital art as a full-time job or you want to make money out of digital art then a display tablet is a necessity now if you don't know what a display tablet is this is what it looks like. This is a display tablet. It's significantly bigger. It's also a lot more bulkier. You're obviously gonna need a lot more equipment and a lot more extra stuff that you're gonna need to set this up to your computer. And it also comes with a stylus that you can use to control and draw on your screen. This is a display tablet, which means you can draw directly on the screen while it mirrors whatever you're doing here onto your laptop screen. Whereas for your drawing tablet, you're gonna need hand-eye coordination for this one because you're gonna be drawing here and whatever's happening here is going to be projected on your computer screen. So your eyes are gonna to have to look at the screen while you draw. And that is harder than it looks, trust me, because it's gonna take some time for you to get adjusted to it. And you're gonna wish that you could actually see where your hand was going and what you're doing at the same time. The display tablet fixes that problem. Now, if you are looking to buy a display tablet, the general price ranges are $400 being the cheapest and up to $3,000 being the most fanciest of the display tablets. You don't have to get the most expensive display tablets out there on the market. Just get one that's decent and I suggest getting one from either Huion, Wacom or XP Pen. Now Huion and XP Pen are a lot cheaper than Wacom is because Wacom is one of the widely known and internationally trusted brands for digital art equipment but they have also some of the most expensive prices I've seen on the market whereas XP Pen and Huion provide quality and a little more bang for your buck because it's cheaper but it does exactly the same thing. So it's up to you where you wanna buy these, but they're definitely a good option if you're going to make digital art your full-time job or if you wanna make money out of it. These little guys are a lot less expensive. Now, the only difference between the most expensive drawing tablet and the cheapest drawing tablet is usually size and brand. So what I have here is a Wacom Intuos drawing pad. As I said before, Wacom is one of the most recognizable and most trusted brands that most digital artists buy their digital art equipment from, but there are other brands like Huion and XP Pen who also have these for sale under their brand and they do offer bang for your buck. This costed me around $200 to $300, whereas if you were to go bigger and if you were to choose one of the cheaper alternative brands that I told you about, with $300, you would usually get a lot bigger drawing tablets than this. You just have more surface area to draw. There's still the same hand-eye coordination tactics, but you'd have a lot more surface area to be able to draw on, whereas this is the size of my hand. So not a lot of room to, you know, swoop in and make those delicate and satisfying lines. 
Next section. Since hardware is done, we're going to talk about software. Now that you've got all your hardware figured out, you're going to need softwares to be able to create the art in the first place. And there are thousands and thousands and thousands of art apps out there on the market right now that you can probably download and get similar results. But to help ease that headache, I've narrowed it down to four apps. Now some of these apps are available on both the computer and other devices and some are just particularly apps. And for the apps, I suggest that you use iPads or tablets. If you have any of those devices lying around your house, all you need is a stylus to help you create smooth lines and it's a much cheaper alternative than deciding to buy one of the drawing pads or the display tablets because even professional artists can create great digital arts on the iPad. Yeah, a little side note for you. Okay, so the first software we have is Medibank. This software is available on both the iOS and Android devices as well as your computers. It is completely free to download and right off the bat you get amazing amounts of maneuverability within the software itself and it is really easy to use for beginners. It's really clean and easy to understand if you're just starting out and you don't know what is what in which software and where goes where. One downside about this software is that it is limited. They have limited amounts of brush presets if you get it in its application form. So there are only a certain amount of brushes that you can get in the app form whereas compared to the software form where they have a lot more varieties of brushes for you to use. So I suggest for Medibang if you're going to get it, I suggest getting it on the laptop and using one of the devices I showed you here. If you really can't then stay tuned because there are other apps that have a wider variety even in their application form. Number two is Autodesk Sketchbook by Autodesk Inc. This software is also available on both your iOS and Android devices. It is also available on your computers. Now this software is also completely free to download and it has a wide variety of brushes for you to use whether it's in an application form or its software form. So right off the bat you don't even have to pay for anything. It's already got tons of brushes for you to use and it's got tons and tons of art supplies already digitized or at your disposal. Now what I like about this app is that if you really do like it then you can always expand your library by downloading the free brush presets, preset packs that they have already released in their store right on the app itself or if you want more you can always buy the brush preset packs that they have already created for you on their app store. Number three is Adobe Photoshop. Now I'm sure that if you have done a little digging on the digital art subject you would have heard so much about this Adobe software. Adobe Photoshop is one of the most commonly used and widely recognized digital art softwares I know and I personally use this. It's great for beginners because they offer little tutorial videos when you hover over their specific tools. One downside is that this software is not free. It is also not available on other devices, only on your Windows and Mac computers. It comes with a monthly subscription price, but there are discounts for different class of workers. You can always go to their website and check it out and see which suits you best. Number four, which is the final app we have. Well, actually, this is just a software. It's only available on your computers, but it's available for both the Mac and Windows users. It is none other than Krita. Krita is a software that I started out with when I first got into digital art. And I got to say that it is a great alternative if you're looking for Photoshop, but you don't want to spend money. So Krita has just as much maneuverability and possibilities and opportunities for you to manipulate your drawings as much as you want as in Photoshop. This software is great for beginners because it's really clean and easy to understand. And you can always explore by tapping different tools and seeing what they can do. They even have tutorials on YouTube for you to go and watch on how to work Krita and how to get the best experience out of the software you're using. Now that 
all the softwares are done, that leaves us with the last section, creating digital art itself. Now, there's no shortcut when it comes to art in general, because art is a skill. You don't have to be born with the talent. Therefore, it takes a lot of time and practice for you to be able to get decent. So, there is no shortcut, and uh, when I say it, I mean it. You have to practice, practice, practice. There is no shortcut out of this. There is no highway that you can take that will get you somewhere. There's no tip, there's no hack, there's no trick that can get you to work faster. You just have to practice. Whatever you're doing, you have to practice it in order to get better. There is one tip that I can give you that will help you speed your process in learning how to do digital art properly. You're watching me on YouTube right now. And YouTube is a great platform with thousands and thousands of tutorials done by other YouTubers who can help you and teach you how to use the software you're using and how to get good art out of it. They can also teach you to improve on areas that you may want to improve on in art in general. So I'd say use YouTube to your full advantage and put in the time and effort. You'll get there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope that this video has helped you get some sort of idea on how to get started as a digital artist. And I hope this video has encouraged you to pick up a new hobby, whatever it may be, even if it's not digital art. Yeah, I just hope that this video has also made a lot of things seem less intimidating than they were before. As always, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to drop a like. Please share this video if you feel that anyone else could benefit from this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to stick around and get notified by clicking the bell icon to get notified whenever I post a new video. So, as always, stay safe, stay home, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Just as I knew you would